Hi guys, and welcome to another coffee chat video with me. This is a series that I like to do every couple of weeks to talk about new releases and discuss, are these products that I'm going to buy? Are these things I'm going to pass on? I do this in collaboration with the playlist that Samantha March has put together. I always link that down below. It's a whole community tag where it highlights a whole bunch of different channels who are doing similar Will I Buy It videos. I personally think these are a lot of fun to watch. It gives me a good roundup of what's coming out in the beauty industry, but then also some thought processes on, okay, do I really need this? Or is this a product worth buying? Based on a lot of different people's opinions and thoughts on things that we have learned about them to date. I gather all of my information for the most part off of Instagram. I use several different accounts. I give them credit as we go throughout the video and I will also link them down below. I think everyone is very familiar with Trend Mood. She does fantastic updates as far as new product launches, but there are several other pages that are equally as phenomenal that typically even have different pictures and information than she does that I follow. But we have a lot to get through this week because I feel like there have been a ton of new releases since I talked to you guys. In fact, some I've actually just had to like put on the back burner as I think about what to talk about this week because there's just entirely too many. So let's get into what I've pulled together to share with you guys. Up first is a new Fenty Beauty product. This is one I didn't personally see coming. I saw her launch the Diamond Milk lip gloss and the Diamond Highlighter. I thought that was kind of gonna be her entry into kind of holiday, fall time frame, but she's actually launching a new Stunna lip paint. This is the shade Unveil. It retails for $24 and it is available now at Sephora. I haven't tried this formula, but I heard amazing things about the red shade that she launched last year. I heard the formula was wonderful. It is a dry down matte liquid lipstick, but everyone said it was a very kind to your lips sort of liquid lipstick, not super drying or cracky or weird, lasted well. This sort of chocolate brown shade, they've swatched on a bunch of different skin tones from light to dark. And it's a shade that I think is gonna work for a ton of different undertones. That being said, I don't personally think it is a shade that is going to work well on me. I can wear browns, but they have to have a very plummy or purpley undertone, a little bit more cool tone leaning for me to pull them off. This seems like a pure chocolate brown just from the swatches that I'm seeing here. I will look at this in store, but my gut reaction when I saw the swatches on the fair skinned model was, mm, this is more of a yellowy, reddish, orangey toned brown versus that sort of plummy purple brown that I prefer. So. I don't think this is going to be a shade that works well for me. But then I did see on a couple of other Instagram pages, this hasn't been on trend mood yet, but there's actually two other shades that are coming out in this sort of neutral range. So you've got a shade called Unbutton, which looks kind of like a more yellow toned camel color. And then you've got something called Uncuffed, which looks like it has a lot more pink and pinky warmth to it, I guess. So I look at these and I think, okay, Unveil is gonna be that chocolate brown. It's out now. It's probably a pass for me. Unbutton is gonna be too yellowy on my undertones, but I do think the shade Uncuffed looks really, really pretty, sort of a rosy color. And so that might be the first shade that I pick up from this Stunna lip paints from Fenty. So I definitely have my eye on that now. No one has been able to confirm when those other two shades are coming out. Are they coming out for holiday or will this be something that kind of rounds out the collection come springtime? I will definitely be swatching the uncuffed shade and potentially picking that one up when it launches. All right, so let's talk next about the collection that I am potentially the most excited about. Trying to think about what else I wanted to share with you guys. And I feel like this is way up at the top of my list of excitement over the last week as I've looked at new launches. And this is the ColourPop Disney Designer Collection. So a lot of the cartoon classics that came out in the, what is it, the 80s and 90s, those totally hit home for me, especially the ones in the 90s because I was a kid and I was watching them. And so Ariel and Beauty and the Beast and Jasmine and all of that kind of era of Disney movies just holds a bit of a sentimental place in my heart. I love the music. I could probably sing you word for word every song in all of those movies. I will refrain for purposes of today's video. So 
All that to say, I was really excited to see this sort of take on a designer Disney collection. They paired with a different illustrator, or I'll find his name and link it down below, but they worked with an illustrator to kind of modernize the Disney dresses, give the princesses a slightly more designer take on their wardrobes, which I think is very clever and very cute. And then I have to be honest, a lot of the products in here really intrigue me. So let's go through these one by one. These are going to be available on 928 on ColourPop, so that is coming up this week. We've got a It's a Princess Thing eyeshadow palette. You've got some Creme Luxe lipsticks, some Super Shock shadows, some Ultra Glossy lips, and then also two Super Shock highlighters. People haven't been talking about the highlighters as much. In fact, a lot of people have been posting and leaving that off, but there are two highlighters as part of this collection as well. So the palette. Oh, the palette. I think it's super cute. So the front of this palette has the Disney princesses in their more modern designer wear. And then the inside has 15 different shadows. You don't have a mirror, but you have this cute little Disney princess signatures at the top. I personally look at this palette and think this is a gorgeous neutral palette. It totally calls to the cool toned lover in my soul. It's got some neutrals, but it's got a lot of really pretty pinks and purples that I personally just I love wearing. When I saw the swatches, I they had me. I loved the pinks. I loved the more neutral shades. I loved the brighter lid shades. I feel like I've got light to dark, a lot of shades to play with on the lids, on the eyes. Looks like all the colors are going to blend together beautifully to make a ton of different looks. I know a lot of people may look at this and think it's a boring neutrals palette, but I gotta be honest, sometimes a boring neutrals palette that leans a little cool or leans a little pink is really what I like from a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, I will play with color. I like playing with color, but as it relates to what I personally wear on a day-to-day -day basis for work, and even just in my downtime, I reach for color, but that's more got a neutral kick to it versus really bright and vivid colors. That's just me. So I think these look absolutely beautiful and I definitely wanna pick up this palette. The Super Shock highlighters, there's two shades. There's a gold shade called A Smile and a Song and a pink shade that is a part of your world. The pink shade is probably going to be one of those pretty silvery pink highlights. I like the Super Shock shadows. I have a few of them. I do reach for them, but I don't feel like I need any more in my collection. So these are two that I'm probably going to pass over. I also have a giant pile of Super Shock shadows. So I'm trying to be a little bit more selective about the ones that I pull into my collection. So there are six in this collection. I do think that shades one and two are probably absolutely beautiful. I think that they probably are great all over lid shades, but I feel like I have a lot of these light champagne -y colors from ColourPop already. So I do think I'm personally going to pass over those two. That being said, I did pass this collection over to my stepdaughter. She is super interested in this. So this is love shade. So I will probably pick that one up for her. The two shades that I'm kind of considering here are the almost there shade. I think it looks like a really pretty, more cool toned brown with maybe a silver shimmer running through it. And I feel like that is gonna be a really pretty all over lid shade that maybe buffs up through the crease for a one shadow look. So that one I kind of have my eye on. I also have my eye on A Whole New World because I think that sort of soft wash of purple is really pretty and I really like how it looks in the swatch there. So those are the two that I'm kind of considering from the Super Shock shadow perspective. From the gloss perspective, there's three. There's sort of a clear with looks like a gold shimmer running through it that's Bibbity. Then they have Bobbity and Boo, which are more of a coral and a purpley mauve. I do think these look really pretty, but I also feel like I have a lot of gloss right now. So I'm kind of hesitant to buy any more because I just bought the Fenty Gloss Balm, the diamond one, so I don't feel like I want Bibbity. I am gonna be picking up Bibbity for my stepdaughter though, so there is a small caveat. Bobbity and Boo look beautiful. <sighs> but I feel like I need to prioritize my purchases as it relates to this collection and the eyeshadow palette and then some of the lipsticks that we're gonna talk about are maybe a little higher up on my list than these glasses. So I'll probably pick up Bibbidi for Kaylee and then skip out on the other two. And then there are six different lipsticks. So we have Tiana, which is a beautiful deep red. You've got Ariel, which is an absolutely beautiful warm toned nude. You have Belle, which is a little bit of a deeper rosier nude. 
jasmine, which is a bright hot pink, snow white, which is a red, but it looks like it leans a little bit more of a brick red, and then cinderella, which is one of those really interesting purpley cool toned pinks. Um, I do have some swatches, one that ColourPop put out here on the left, and then the other one on the right was one that I had found online from somebody who had already gotten their hands on the collection. I think the colors look pretty comparable one to another, which is encouraging because sometimes you see colors online and you look from one photo to the next and you're like, these don't even look like the same products, right? So they do look consistent. I think I'm going to prioritize and probably pick up the lighter shades. So I do think I'm going to pick up Ariel. I'm going to pick up Belle. And then I also think I'm going to pick up Cinderella. I already have a Snow White shade from Besame, which I feel like is true to color to the movie because they worked closely with Disney on that. So I don't feel like I need a Snow White shade. Jasmine is a shade that looks really pretty, but I don't think I would wear it a ton. And then Tiana is a gorgeous shade. I love this kind of shade but I tend to reach for these really deep vampy colors, either in a very matte dry down pencil or a matte liquid lipstick, because otherwise I feel like they move all over my face and I get a little nervous about colors that are that deep or dark. So in a lipstick formula, that's not a color that I typically purchase. So I do think I'm gonna skip over Tiana. I do think if you're interested in any of these, I would probably set a reminder on your calendar just to go out there and pick these up because I do think they're gonna go fast. Okay, so I took a quick break to go eat some dinner and I came back with a beverage because I figured this was a coffee chat. It's too late in the evening to be drinking coffee. So I've gone with some hot cider that may or may not be spiked with some. Jack Daniels. So uh, let's keep talking about fall and uh, spicy related things. So Too Faced, uh, let's just get one thing out of the way. So as it relates to products that are coming out for holiday, they're now flooding the market in mass, both previews and also things at Ulta and Sephora and Nordstrom. And we're seeing collections that are specific to each of those retailers coming out from brands like Too Faced and Tarte and Stila, they tend to be the big three that give different releases for individual retailers. So we tend to see these mass palettes and little collections of things, and they'll have some that are just go to Sephora and some just for Ulta and Nordstrom and HSN and blah, blah, blah. I never buy any of those. I never am interested in any of those. I always feel like they are lesser quality. They're typically made in China versus the USA. And not to say that there's not plenty of makeup that's coming from China that's perfectly lovely. But in general, I just feel like those products are never quite up to the standards. They always tend to be in big bulky packaging or have things that fall out and just, I don't know, I have never, I never cared, I never purchased any of these big sort of holiday collections from Too Faced or Tarte or Stila or anything like that. And that remains true for this year. The one thing that I've seen Too Faced do that I think is fairly smart is to launch some palettes that are a little bit more in keeping with their core line. And in particular, launch something called their Gingerbread Spice Palette. This retails for $49. This is their standard 18 pan palette. It's in that tin packaging that we're all very used to from Too Faced at this point. And it appears to be a product that's made in the USA and is gonna have a similar quality to some of the chocolate bar palettes that we've seen them and peach palettes that we've seen them launch. This is the first holiday offering from Too Faced that has honestly caught my eye in a really long time. I thought the colors in here were all neutral, had some fun pops of color. I liked the swatches that I had seen online with some neutrals, pops of pink, some really pretty olives. I thought it was a really pretty palette and I do think it's a very pretty palette. It does apparently smell like gingerbread, which, you know, fine scented products, not my favorite thing, but as long as it doesn't smell like chemicals and a scent, I will be okay with it for the most part. Not a compelling reason for me to stampede out by this, but I do give Too Faced some credit for launching a palette that is a little bit more in keeping with the quality and the style of their core palettes. So I had put this Too Faced one on kind of my maybe list. It wasn't like the most compelling holiday offering I had seen, but it caught my eye enough to make me think, 
okay, maybe if we start supporting Too Faced in efforts like this versus all these bulk kind of kits that they just pump out in the holiday season, maybe they will continue to be thoughtful and release holiday palettes for, I feel like a group of us out here who don't really care for all of these like kitschy holiday kits they normally do. Don't get me wrong, this is a little kitschy too, but I then saw some swatches of this compared to the new ColourPop palette. Budiction did this really interesting side-by-side -side comparison of the Gingerbread palette on the left and the Good Sport palette from ColourPop on the right. I had kind of thought I wanted the Gingerbread palette. I don't know about you, but for me personally, I look at the ColourPop side and it's a lot more intriguing to me. It mimics a lot of what is happening in the Gingerbread palette, but I think also provides a little bit more interest with some of the green shades and a really pretty matte mustard. The plums and the purples look a lot darker and richer. If I'm going to get a palette in this direction, I'm leaning towards the Good Sport palette from ColourPop versus a gingerbread one. And I just wanted to show you guys those swatches because I didn't realize just these how similar they actually were. All right, now let's move on to some Natasha Denona palettes. So she is going to have two palettes coming out at holiday time. The one we saw first is the Cranberry palette. This is her full-sized five pan palette. These retail for $48. It looks like it's gonna have some special holiday gold packaging. We do have swatches of them at this point. So you've got a really pretty purple, a sort of peachy coppery gold and then more of what I would consider to be a true tr true neutral champagne gold along with the more plummy and cranberry shades. I don't know for $48 I'm just not sold that this is the right five pan palette for me from Natasha Denona. And then actually today, as I was putting all of these sort of images together, we have a new launch from Trend Mood and that is the mini star palette. So these retail for $25. You're getting significantly less product, but as a lot of us have talked about with our larger collections, we don't pan a lot of product. So mini palettes are actually a great value as long as the quality is there. That peachy shade for as fair as I am could act like a really nice transition shade. That brown looks really pretty, the matte to kind of buff into my outer corner and up a little through my crease. And then I feel like I could put any three of those shimmer shades on my lids and it would be a really pretty look. This is launching on 925 on Sephora. So that is tomorrow based on when I think I'm uploading this video. So I'm gonna go out there then and look at the swatches, but I do think this is one I will probably pick up. Let's talk drugstore and get into some more affordable priced makeup. One product that I have actually already picked up and it's currently being shipped to me as we speak is the new Maybelline Nikki Tutorials Master Chrome Metallic Highlighter. This is shade 250. I have to believe that there is a name associated with this, but I couldn't find it on any of the Instagram accounts that I followed that have posted about this, but it does appear to be a really pretty light champagne. Up until now, the lightest shade was their rose gold. We've seen some swatches. It does appear to be a very neutral gold, so not particularly brassy, sort of a light champagne white color. I was definitely interested in picking this up, not only for all the testing I'm doing for drugstore makeup right now and fall releases, but just in general, because I felt like this was a shade that was missing from overall highlighter collections from Maybelline. Let's switch to a different highlighter. So this is a little highlighter collection that Becca is coming out with. So this is their Passport to Glow collection. They are $38 each. We have Berlin Glow, Royal Glow, and Parisian Lights. These are out there on Beautylish now. You can pick up Royal Glow and Parisian Lights. Berlin Glow, they're saying, out there on 924. And I find this is really interesting because I just got done decluttering my highlighters not that long ago, and I ended up decluttering all of my Becca highlighters because I just felt like they were missing some shades, uh, especially as it related to lighter skin tones. I felt like they were missing that very light pinkish highlighter, pink champagne light highlighter that so many other brands have, they don't have in their collection. And then of course, about a week ago, I see, oh, there you go. This is coming out. Now I'm going to assume this is a limited edition highlighter, but please, what am I ever going to get through an entire highlighter? This is some swatches of what Berlin Glow looks like. So it seems to be that perfect light pinky champagne that's not quite 
like strongly pink that's a little bit more a neutral pink champagne it looks very pretty from the swatch that we've seen so i am all over picking this one up out on beautylish when it is there on the 24th because i feel like this is the becca highlighter that i have been waiting for pat mcgrath has released some tinted lip balms um these are 38 dollars. there's nine shades they say they're antioxidant and vitamin rich formula I saw this sort of image of all of the lipsticks there and I was like, you know what, if I want a sheer balmy product, I am just gonna reach for my L'Oreal Color Riche. They are 10 bucks versus 38. So I kind of wrote all of these off as like, okay, that's nice, but not really my cup of tea. I don't own any other Pat McGrath lipsticks, so I can't really comment on them as a brand. So I was all no, 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 no on these. And then I saw this image here. And that to me is probably one of the most prettiest set of glossy, warm nude lips that I've ever seen. Kind of obsessed with this picture of these lips. And that is the shade uh, sex Sexty, sex Sexy, Success, oh my God, I can't even say that. Sex Sexy. Okay, well, that's apparently what it, the shade is. Now, am I gonna be able to jump over the hump and pick this shade up? Probably not for $38, but it does make me wanna go back and reevaluate the new nude line of the L'Oreal Color Riche and see if I can find something in that family that looks like this, because right now, I don't feel like I have this particular color in that Color Riche formula, so, that is probably gonna be the direction I wanna go, but I would love to replicate this particular color in this sheer balmy look somehow, just not for $38. All right, back to some more eyeshadow palettes. Charlotte Tilbury is releasing another large format eyeshadow palette. This is the Stars In Your Eyes palette. It retails for $75. It's got 12 shades. This palette appeals to me a lot more than the very monotonal palette that she put out for holidays last year. I also think the packaging on this one looks absolutely beautiful. It's got this like cranberry gold glitter running through it. It looks really cool and unlike anything else that I've ever seen come out on the marketplace. The swatches also look beautiful. I think the colors are really pretty. You've got some classic shades in there, but you've also got some really pretty purples and pinks and sort of salmon colors along with some bright champagnes and golds. So the swatches look really pretty. I hesitate a little bit with this palette for two reasons. One, $75 is a lot of money. It's more than I typically pay for eyeshadow palettes. And then number two, I have swatched Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows in person at a counter in Phoenix, and I was kind of unimpressed. So they felt very stiff. They didn't have a lot of that creaminess or pigmentation payoff the way that I've just come to expect from brands like ColourPop kicks her butt all day long as it relates to eyeshadow formula. And on top of that, I've seen a lot of reviews who, from people who I trust commenting on how that eyeshadow formula isn't all that great. So it's not just a finger swatch at the store and it wasn't great. It didn't apply well either from a lot of people who have owned some of her quads. So those things combined give me a little bit of hesitancy to pick up something like this. I had this one on my sort of wish list, maybe list, maybe I'll ask for a Nordstrom gift card and pick this up after the holidays kind of place. I wasn't like gaga ready to go. I have heard a couple of people say the formula on this is different slash better, but then the palette came out with the Disney princesses, and I honestly feel like a lot of the tones are kind of similar. Not one for one by any stretch of the imaginations, but I'm getting a lot of similar vibes from the princess palette as I am from the Charlotte Tilbury one. One is 20, one is 75. I don't know, in my mind, I kind of am just dismissing the Charlotte Tilbury one and just leaning towards the princess one at this point because I don't really feel like I need this. Next up, let's talk about some products from Maybelline. So they've released new shades of their Superstay Matte Ink. I did go and track these down because I thought, ooh, there's some really pretty fall looking shades in here. So I did pick up two more shades. So the shade on the white is 130 Self Starter. It's more of a deeper coral color. And then 135 Globetrotter is the other shade. And it's definitely one of those 
rusty sort of pumpkin-y orange colors that I think is just really fun for fall. So definitely a couple of shades that I will see myself reaching for as I'm starting to do more fall looks and fall makeup. They've done some vampier colors like a navy and plums and then there's a couple of lighter pinks and berries and things in there. So it's a very good collection I feel like for fall and then also some bolder looks. So those are out there now. I don't feel like they've gotten a ton of hype for having these new colors but I did want to call out they're out there. And then there is a new Maybelline palette that's coming out that I have not seen a lot of conversation about yet either. And this is the Countdown palette. We don't know exactly how much it's going to be, but from what I've read online, it looks like this is going to be a palette that Maybelline launches for the holidays. So I'm guessing it's going to come out some point in October or maybe early November. We don't have swatches, but we do have an inside shot of this product. So you've got some more berry shades on the left and some warmer rust shades on the right and then you've got what appears to be potentially highlighters in the middle. I don't know if they're going to market this as a highlighter eyeshadow palette but that's kind of how I'm feeling looking at it. I will probably give this one a whirl just because I'm kind of curious about the quality of these and what kind of format this is going to be. It looks like a different pressing and style of shadow than the City Mini palettes that are out there. First thought was maybe it was more like that Total Temptation palette that came out. I didn't care for the Total Temptation palette. I found it was very chalky and not pigmented and just dusted away. I have been able to make the Cine Mini palettes work much better than that palette. But the pressing and just the style and look of these shadows doesn't really look like either one of those formulas, at least from what I've seen so far. So I'm kind of curious about this one. And if I see that it's a reasonable price point, I will probably pick it up. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is the new Anastasia palette for holidays. So this is the Air Sultry palette is going to retail for $42. It is available on the 25th on the Anastasia website and then 10.9 for retailers online and then 1012 in retail stores. Not a lot of people were very excited about this palette. It had a lot of immediate comments about being boring or unattractive or looks just like soft glam. And I gotta be honest, I kind of sat back and was like, well, maybe kind of sort of, okay. And then I started seeing some swatches come out and I have to be honest, I am going to have a bit of a dissenting opinion here because I think this looks nothing like the Soft Glam palette. And I think it is a cool toned palette that I have kind of been looking for from her. She's been doing a lot of warm tone palettes. She's done a lot of fun pops of color palettes, the Norvina palette, although it had some cool toned shades in it, also had a lot of warmth in it and a lot of bright colors. I kind of feel that this sultry palette is more of a cool toned sister to the soft glam. And as I look at these shades, I see grays and I see taupes and I see silvery shades and I see cool toned bronzes and I see a coral shade that leans a little bit more pink just to kind of give it a pop. I look at this palette and think this is a neutral palette, but it is a cool toned neutral palette that is unlike anything in my collection. When I think about the cool tone palettes that are in my collection, and I've actually pulled them all out and looked at them and thought, okay, does it match this? Does it match this? A lot of my cool tone palettes tend to go either very gray or very taupey purple. Not a lot of them find ways to bring in the cool taupey and gray shades into one palette and not a lot of them find a way to pull in sort of silvery bronzy shades as well so I think this is very very different than the soft glam palette that palette has a lot of gold in it I just recently talked about that in my everyday makeup drawer about the fact that there was so much gold in that palette but it's not this this is much cool, more cool toned. This one has a lot of the shades that I personally love to wear. These just have colors that make my blue eyes pop and look really nicely against my fair skin with bluish pinkish undertones. I like this. And I feel like the other thing that I heard people saying was that it didn't feel like a holiday palette. I think people were looking for pops of color or greens or more reds, or I'm not entirely certain what they were looking for, jewel tones maybe. I look at this and think, okay, 
Holiday is that time of year where I like wearing a bold lip. I wear all kinds of different shades of red. I will wear plums. I mean, I'm all about a bold lip for holiday parties and just in general, the month of December just feels like bold lip month for me. So when I'm doing a very bold lip like that, what I prefer to do on my eyes is something that is a little softer and a little smokier and I think just pairs better with my lip looks versus another big, bold, bright eye with a lot of color. So I kind of feel like this is the perfect palette to pair with all of those brighter holiday lip colors that I personally like wearing. Yeah, I am the dissenting opinion here. I really like this palette. I'd be curious to see what you guys think below. For my money, this is one of the holiday offerings that probably has me the most excited. So I will definitely be picking this one up. All right, guys, so that wraps us up for this coffee chat style video also known today as Spiked Cider Chat. Let me know down in the comments how you guys are feeling about these products and just about the holiday offerings in general. What's been catching your eye? Are you completely overwhelmed with holiday? Because I kind of feel like I am. And I was at one point thinking about, all right, I'm just going to talk about non- holiday related products for a while in these coffee chats. And then I'm gonna do one behemoth video where I just round up and recap all of holiday. And then I got to looking at all the holiday kits that were coming out and all the offerings from Smashbox and Stila and blah, 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 and Too Faced. And I realized that it would be a very negative video because I pretty much want none of it. So with the exception of the few things that I've talked about in here that caught my eye, a lot of the holiday stuff I'm kind of like, about, which I guess is probably a good thing. Maybe I'm being a little more selective and thoughtful about the things that I am considering purchasing as we head into holiday season. But as we sit here right now, not a lot is grabbing my attention outside of the things we talked about today. So I'm definitely interested. Are there certain products that are catching your eye? Are there certain things that you think are going to be really great for your collection or you've been looking at in particular? I will probably pull in a few more holiday items as I see them for next coffee chat. But right now I am definitely feeling a little oversaturated and a little overwhelmed by holiday coming out in the marketplace. All right, enough ramblings aside, look forward to chatting with you guys down in the comments. Hope you're having a great day, bye.